Mr. President, when I spoke about the energy bills a couple of weeks ago, I referenced 260,000 acres of land being forced into industrial solar production under this comprehensive plan. Now, just last night after the committee met, we discover it's even larger. Now it's over 340,000 acres. The growth of this number in the last few days is troubling enough. More troubling is how my concerns regarding this mass loss of valuable farmland to the new purpose were publicly scoffed at by a colleague who attempted to juxtapose the supposedly minuscule amount of acreage to the total acreage of the entire state of Michigan. Essentially, I'm just Henny Penny shouting, the sky is falling. This makes for some nice tweets and laughs for the gullible and for the acolytes alike, but it's not an actual material rebuttal. Any more than saying that the Packers are better than the Lions this year because their total franchise record is way better than the Lions over their entire history. By the way, it's 793 wins for the Packers and 585 for the Lions. 13 championships for the Packers, four for the Lions, and no Super Bowls. It's simply, uh, it is simply an unfair and improper way to make a comparison. You got it this year. The Lions are better than the Packers, okay, for this year. The real truth is we're not talking about taking 340,000 acres from all 62 million acres in Michigan. And for the chair of the Public Service Commission to tell the committee so sanguinely, that this is just less than 0.55% of our land and thereby dismisses all the concerns about ag land specifically is incredibly irresponsible and patronizing. The comparison for the nation, 0.55%, would be placing the entire states of New Jersey, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Delaware under solar panels. That makes up 0.55% of the entire contiguous lower 48. It seems a little unlikely that those people in those states feel like their states are inconsequential to the nation. More importantly, it is as if the commissioner thinks we're stupid or hasn't actually given much thought to the truth. Either way, it's a complete discredit to the position he holds. Maybe we need the 340,000 acres of sheep to help him pull the wool over our eyes. Similarly, the UP energy study he agreed to do while lobbying on the House floor last week is a gross waste of taxpayer resources since we've already had a UP energy study, the most recent of which was done under his leadership just a few years ago. Everyone knows that this is about farmland. It's the extensive and nearly exclusive focus of this endeavor. That's why we already voted to fundamentally gut our Farmland Preservation Act with all the self-congratulatory talk about how it's just a suspension and the land can go back to agriculture in the future when it's done growing all the sheep we don't need. We are not going to gut our 20 million acres of forest land for this to happen. We're not going to build it on Mackin Island. And it's certainly not going to be on our shorelines. We're just a one quarter acre impact has thrown our entire nation of Army Corps of Engineers and all the state leaders of Michigan into a vast tizzy of five years to try and figure out whether or not saving our core backbone of natural gas in this state should be preserved for a one quarter acre impact on the shoreline. We're not going to take it from the seven million acres of developed cities in this state and it certainly couldn't be the 15% of this state covered by wetlands. Of course, we could mandate that it comes from the hundreds of thousands of acres of lands that consumers and DTE own. It's all self-owned, ratepayer-funded land. Thousands of acres. But I didn't see that in this bill either. So that leaves farmland. And here's the area where we really have to provide the details. Because some people apparently don't know, and that's all right, because you're not all farmers. I get it, we're less than 1% of the population now. But not all farmland is created equal. Much of it is not where solar development is feasible, 
We're not going to build a 100 megawatt generation on old farm fields on the west end of Ontonagon County or in the innumerable small farm fields tucked in woods all over this state. If we did, the cost would be even higher due to the extra transmission needs. Transmission, by the way, a factor very conveniently left out of the factoring of costs for this big corporate solar companies and utilities because that's not their cost. They're not going to pay for that. So the pressures on the acres of highly productive cropland in specific areas are going to be the real and, and they're going to be incredibly significant, especially when we remove the cropland that's under trees and vines and any that's in the isolated areas of this state. The focus will be on large, contiguous blocks of farmland, the very places with the highest degree of productivity. In this state, Dairy is the largest egg enterprise based on product value. And while farms and the areas with cows might not take up the most of this land, they depend on millions of acres of land to feed those cows and to efficiently and scientifically apply the waste as a fertilizer. Dairy farmers operate in a carefully obtained equilibrium with the land, with its needs and its use, with their neighbors, some who are other farmers, but many who aren't. And those same arrangements are very true of other crop farmers who rent and lease huge acreages from numerous landowners. Once these landowners, whether they're farmers or not, get the chance to move their acres into solar development with enormously inflated and unfairly subsidized non-competitive rates, they will effectively destroy wreck and ruin that equilibrium, and therefore ruin and wreck numerous family farming operations. It's absolutely critical to understand that what we are doing here is making a huge value judgment. It goes way beyond the stated goals. Whether they're to save the planet or simply clean up our energy generation, we are fundamentally altering our economy. Recognizing that agriculture is the number two sector and all the other structures of our communities that are founded upon this economy. Agriculture, the industry that brings into the state an average of $100 billion annually in revenue and employs 20% of our citizens. What we're doing here is no different than us saying to all of Southeast Michigan, hey, we're not gonna build cars anymore and we're not going to drive cars anymore. We're going to walk. We're going to invest in a shoe company. Let's just build shoes from now on. That's what we're doing. It's that fundamentally changing to the entire economy of Michigan to do this to your farmland. We are taking our communities to drive an agenda that hostily promotes, incentivizes, requires, and facilitates the repurposing of productive farmland. I want to be clear, I'm not an unyielding advocate for local control over all things. I'm a private property rights stalwart. I don't like local zoning in the countryside. Those of us who live there, live there so we can dig holes, cut down trees, and raise animals while minding our own business and expecting our neighbors to do the same. I want landowners to have the freedom to enter into agreements to use their land in the pursuit of their own happiness. But that's not the debate we're having today. These bills don't allow the free market to work and balance out competing interests on a fair process. They corrupt the process. They put a gold brick on one side of the scales. It's a massive way that can't help but topple those scales right over in favor of a massive realignment paradigm shift of our rural economy and communities. This isn't just like central planning, this is central planning. It's making a statement to the state and to the whole nation that farmland's not the most valuable as farmland and that farming itself isn't even all that valuable, not in comparison to something else, in this case, solar energy production. And why do we focus on just devaluing agriculture and the people who are involved in that economy? Why aren't we also offering to suspend the Commercial Forest Reserve Act or the Qualified Forest Act or Renaissance Zones or Brownfields or Industrial Parks, maybe even State Forests? 
There are three times more acres in state forests in Michigan than are in crops. And we don't even eat the trees. The state of Michigan could easily take all of the proposed acreage out of its massive land holdings and put zero pressure on private property while also generating real revenue for the state from these big corporate solar companies and also increase the taxable value for our local communities, villages, and cities. Now, the wisdom of such dependence on solar energy has been and continues to be a matter very worthy of debate, very diligent and serious debate. However, the failure or glossing over of its impact on the state's number two industry and the thousands of communities that find themselves tied to that industry is either the epitome of folly or of hubris. Rather than deceive the people by implying I'm Henny Penny claiming the sky is falling by suggesting that my 340,000 acres of objections are a drop in a land bucket of 62 million acres, let's have enough respect for disagreement to present this plan for all that it does, good or bad, long or short term. The shifting of values and priorities. Within that, the meaningful loss of farmland, farms, food production, families, and the present culture of our rural communities. Some of you believe it's worth it. Some of us don't. Just how big is this supposedly negligible 340,000 acres? Well, that's about 79% of Wayne County. And it's bigger than any of the following counties. Benzie, Leelanau, Aranac, Charlevoix, Bay, Grand Traverse, Emmett, Antrim, even Macomb. Cass, Mason, Muskegon, St. Joseph, Gladwin, Branch, Oceana, Otsego, Midland, Roscommon, Shiawassee. Hardly seems negligible considering that a lot of your districts are smaller than these counties. It means that supporters of this policy are literally saying an area larger than their own Senate districts is inconsequential and should be unduly and uncompetitively converted into a use that we're forcing to be more valuable than its present use. But not in the backyards of the majority of sponsors and supporters. Instead, these bills foisted onto the rest of us, the minority, who don't want it or don't believe in its necessity. If ever there was a more patronizing, undemocratic attempt to lord it over the folks in the rural areas, this is it. This is precisely the tyranny of the majority that Alex de Tocqueville spoke about in Democracy in America. People in our areas have real dreams and desires. They want a safe place to raise kids and an opportunity for them to stay and raise the next generation. That's why it matters to farmers whether the land they lease for $60 an acre annually is just suddenly swept away by someone who's willing to pay $1,800 an acre a month. $60 annually, $1,800 a month. You can't compete against that. That's why we fight so hard against those who don't live there changing our communities by government fiat. I'm a general supporter of local control, but it's only a means to an end here. The real issue is this overwhelming government drive to reconfigure huge swaths of the state's landscape and electric energy systems. What's been the result of these choices in other places? All around the world, higher prices, less reliability, returns to traditional hydrocarbon-based generation and energy. Why do we think that trend's going to be different here? Gentrification is the result, if not the goal, of all of this. The irony is that so many of you constantly and persistently tell everyone how much you love the UP or other rural Michigan areas. Yet the very things that make you appreciate the economy, culture, natural and picturesque landscapes that undergird it and identify it will be stripped away for the cold industry and mechanics of miles and miles of panels powering communities hundreds of miles away. You come up to the UP to see wilderness and unspoiled beauty of mother nature or you travel downstate and enjoy the uniform lines of corn and orchards so you can get to a cider mill 
And yet the vote today is to seize these for the squalor and scarring of industry and corporate greed, done in the name of having all the electric gadgets and needs while assuaging the guilt that's intrinsic to a modern economy. Last week, a study showed Michigan residents should expect this land use change to increase their rates by at least $100 a month. The rates in the UP, already the most expensive place for energy in the lower 48, looks to be closer to an additional 12% increase. Last year, my constituents already had their rates double. How can we possibly say we care about their future while we do this? Electricity, priced or regulated out of existence. Land unavailable. Food prices too high. No farmers. No beautiful land. Kids chased out for all of the above. Brilliant. Doesn't sound like much of a future unless you're writing a Mad Max script. Advocates of this plan, of course, they also released their own report. Of course, their report had those claiming nothing but cost savings for everyone, sunshine and rainbows across the beautiful land, free light bulbs, wool and mutton for everyone. Funny how it came from Five Lakes, an advocacy group to end fossil fuels, and from DTE, who always does just fine since we guarantee its huge margins in law and rate setting. Meanwhile, these bills depend on our decrepit Public Service Commission, which continues to rubber stamp rate increases on our citizens at every turn while patting itself on the back because it made the increase smaller than the utility asked for. This is the commission that now gets a new rubber stamp, the job of approving citing. It gives the supporters the opportunity to tell their constituents, you don't have to worry. There's a body that's been created to protect your interests. They're going to review this request from a multi-billion dollar corporation with dozens of lawyers who doesn't care about your community or the future. Meanwhile, the commission is just told right in the law that they have to approve the applications if the permit requirements are met. No thinking, no weight of wisdom, no consideration of need, just stamp the paper. Some job. This is all very personal. Many of you feel, many of you fell, feel the costs to all of us now pale in comparison to the looming doom. Supporters are so sure that their opposition, that the opposition of those who don't agree with them is ignorant or corrupt. Meanwhile, those of us in opposition are absolutely mystified by how supporters miss or ignore the clear conflicts and gratuitous profiteering driven by those in renewable industries and academia. As we look around us and are told the earth itself is circling the drain, or the sauna, we can see the massive progress towards renewal and a cleaner world. We are told things are getting worse, but we look around us and the air and the lakes and the soils are cleaner than they were 50 years ago. Wildlife's making huge recoveries all across Michigan and the world. We can eat fish from Lake Erie, if you want. Farmers have to buy sulfur fertilizer because acid rain is gone. Just in my district alone, the change from our coal plant to natural gas has removed 86% of CO2 emissions. And this doesn't even consider the massive reductions that had already been obtained at the coal plant over the decades with newer technologies before its closure. This plan and the siting it needs refuses to acknowledge any of this. Instead, it frames everything in the past as inconsequential and dismissible, framing the present situation as dire and urgent. All of this fits another de Tocqueville quote where he says, Tyranny in democratic republics does not proceed the same way. It ignores the body and goes straight for the soul. The master no longer says, you will, do, you will think as I do. You may keep your life, your property, and everything else. But from this day forth, you shall be a stranger among us. You will retain your civic privileges, but they will be of no use to you. For if you seek the votes of your fellow citizens, they will withhold them. And if you seek only their esteem, they will feign to refuse even that. You will remain among men, but you will forfeit your rights to humanity. When you approach your fellow creatures, they will shun you as one who is impure. 
and even those who believe in your innocence will abandon you, lest they too be shunned in turn. Go in peace. I won't take your life, but the life I leave you is worse than death." End quote. As I mentioned, this has all become very personal. For my constituents and for my family, this is the existential threat we see. Not one a hundred years from now. This is the uncertainty we deal with as we consider, can we keep farming? Can we grow? Should my children even dream about farming? Can I make the farm grow to make room for the next generation? Will we be able to maintain the egg sector in this state or the forest product sector? Or will people 10 hours away decide to assuage their personal beliefs and fears by stealing our dreams and way of life? The decision is ours here today. Vote no.